Is it all good to start? Yes, you can start now. Thank okay, you. that's great. Thank you so much, Ilul. Uh, thank you, Dr. Safia, for coming in and making sure that we remember it is, in fact, International Happiness Day um, tomorrow. So to start off, I guess we should say hello and welcome and assalamu alaikum to everybody. I think most people here are colleagues and friends um, of UM in UM. So hello to the beloved colleagues in UM. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Today we are actually celebrating um, the International Happiness Day, which happens tomorrow. And the International Happiness Day is celebrated every year on the 20th of March. So today, ADEC is celebrating it with this webinar on Happy at UM. Let's try to find some happiness and some joy in this madness of life in UM. And next week on Friday, we will also be having a special appearance by the Malaysian Mindfulness um, uh, Chair Association, the chairman of the Malaysian Mindfulness Association, who will be leading a mindfulness practice to also help us to keep calm, be wise, and stay kind. Let me just show you the poster for that, and hopefully you might be able to um, start planning for taking time off for next Friday. So for those of you who will be joining us next Friday, excuse me as I go through all the slides I've got here, this will, okay, it's coming up. All right, so this will be the mindfulness practice. It's a practical-based workshop, but it'll be done online. So do join us. Um, it's actually being led by the founding chairman of Malaysia Mindfulness Association, Dr. Yeo Karheng from USM. But he is not just the founding chairman of Malaysian Mindfulness Association. He is also teaching mindfulness to students, to staff, um, even as well to people in corporations uh, you know, the top technology corporations, um, and he's actually really, really good at doing that. So, and he knows that, you know, we lead pretty stressful lives as academics. So he's going to be here next Friday to help us with a little bit of stress reduction through mindfulness. Um, so hope to see you next Friday. I'm going to scroll back um, to the beginning of my slides so that we can start on today's presentation. Well, actually, I'm kind of hoping that it won't be so much of a presentation, although I do have a few slides to share. But uh, the hope is that we'll be able to maybe break out into some discussion rooms and not so much to discuss, but really more to connect with one another and hopefully be able to um, inspire one another and help and support um, all of us. OK, I've got a, uh, a hand raised there. Is that uh, Prof. Uh, Sheena? That's, that's, that's by mistake, sorry. Okay, right, no worries. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Okay, so um, let's start off um, just by maybe, is it okay if anybody wants to just open up uh, the their webcam and you can raise your hand, I suppose, and just say hello and maybe start off by sharing what you have done to make yourself calm, wise, or kind today? I can start off. I should probably do that. So I think one of the things that I have done today to get myself calm is to tell myself, no matter if I'm doing this last minute, it's going to be okay. I have trust in myself, and I know that I can do it. So I'm just going to be really kind to myself, and that will help me to stay calm. And I think hopefully that will help me to be wise as well so that next time I can be a little bit faster or if not, I can continue staying calm <laughs> despite uh, having to do things last minute. Can I invite anybody else now to share? Everybody's a little bit shy. Okay, so people are sharing or at least saying good morning on the chat. So that's all right. I am half thinking, would anybody like to maybe share what you are doing to keep yourself calm in this busy time? You can share it in the chat. Maybe we can look at a couple before we move on to the rest of the slides today. Okay, everybody is a little bit shy. That's all right. 
um, you guys aren't warm up yet, so that's okay. We will warm up a little bit later and hopefully we can share more. Oh, we've got somebody here um, from, is it Prof. Nur Azura Muhammad? Oppan Nur Azura or Dr. Nur Azura? Stay calm by remembering that Allah is always with us. Very true, especially on this um, Friday morning. Thank you for sharing. Uh, we also have Dr. Nuliana who says that she exercises. And uh, we have Professor Gizawa here who's happy because today is Friday. Yay, tomorrow is going to be the weekend. <laughs> Dr. Pamala listens to calm music. I like that too. Do we have any more? Okay, we've got uh, from Aizato Akma. Keep calm by doing things earlier than deadlines. Good for you. Uh, joining this talk. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. Of Dr. Sharifa. Uh, using essential oils. I love essential oils as well. That calms me. I haven't used it in a long time, but yeah, essential oils are really great. They, especially the lavender ones. I really like that. Uh, Prof. Samim reads. I like to read. I miss reading, though. <laughs> Trying to find time to read. Um, I have on this meditation that's very, very useful. Meditation and of course for Muslims, prayer and zikir would be helping a lot. Um, Hakuna Matara. <laughs> okay, I forgot what that means, but I know it's something good. <laughs> and long rides, Dr. Nardana says she's taking long rides can long rides or long rides out can make you happier okay hakuna matata it means no worries right no worries don't worry be happy <laughs> thank you for sharing that we're gonna try and do that today okay so thank you so much everybody for participating at least on the chat uh, that was very very uh sorry <laughs> I was just closing the chat that was very very helpful and i really appreciate that so today what are we going to do today we are going to look at a little bit of um uh, materials that i've actually gathered and compiled from the action for happiness which is a movement that's based in the uk but it's an international movement that is trying to spread happiness and joy around the world and this movement allows us to actually um get in contact with them and also to use their resources. So my slides today, disclaimer, uh, they're not fully my slides. They're actually a compilation or some cut and paste that I've taken from the Action for Happiness website. So let's just go, um, I'll share a little bit. So I'm hoping that we can go through some of the things that we can do to stay calm, be wise, and of course, um, you know, be kind to each other. So we have a Padlet, which I hope um, you'll be able to, to use. Uh, you can either scan this code on your phone to enter the Padlet, or what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to copy the link and I'm gonna put it in the chat. And then hopefully you can click on that link and then um follow the or, or join the padlet where it's a padlet wall that i hope we will be able to um share some thoughts and some uh actions and encouragement for each other so what we're going to be doing with the padlet is uh feel free to you know start typing in uh right now if you wish to but the main reason that we have the padlet is that later on this morning we're going to be breaking up into circles uh we have breakout rooms we're going to try that out hopefully it works if it doesn't don't worry we'll find another solution so we're going to going to break out rooms with maybe two or three or maximum four people in each room. And we'll have some exercises or some discussion points that we can do in those breakout rooms. And afterwards, when we come out of the breakout rooms, uh, maybe the group can share what you've discussed uh, and share that on the Padlet. I hope this isn't too much, um, too much work. <laughs> if you don't want to join, you want to opt out, completely understand no worries if you just want to sit back and listen sometimes we're tired of doing work but if you do get into a breakout room um i do hope that uh you'll be able to at least maybe connect with each other because i think everybody here today are pretty much like-minded people who want to find happiness and who want to spread joy in um and 
wherever you are, if you're not from UM, from whatever organization or whatever community that you're from. So hopefully the breakout rooms or what we call the sharing circles might be useful for that so that we can connect with one another because connection um, and relating and just, you know, just talking to people, it can really help actually uh, to help us to keep calm <laughs> in the frantic world that we're living in now. Okay, so, um, yeah, so what are we going to be doing today? We're going to be looking at a few uh, ways and uh, a few, I guess, actions and a little bit um, of, well, not so much research, but I'll be sharing just a, a little synopsis of some research that actually tells us how doing things like self-care or being resilient um, is actually good for us. So we are actually going to be looking at, I'm sorry, I'm looking over there, but then I'm also looking at my uh, my presentation computer. So uh, please don't mind me for that. So we're gonna be looking at um, keeping calm. And we're also gonna be looking at, uh, well, as you know, okay, um, being wise and um, staying kind to one another. So let's start off with um, keeping calm. There's basically uh, not, not just two, but there are actually many ways that we can keep calm. But what we're going to look at today, I've just taken two things from the Action for Happiness website. One is to keep calm through self-care or accepting yourself and accepting um, your limitations as well as accepting your strengths. So we're going to be looking at that and also we'll be looking at keeping calm by being resilient, being able to bounce back after we've fallen or after we've like been crushed, but yet still being able to come back up and um, and pick up the pieces and go forward and soldier on and perhaps even be even happier and stronger from the experience. So uh, very, very briefly, um, you know, when we talk about self-care, you know how we are like, pretty nice to other people. We're quite kind Hi, to Kamara, our friends. Can hear you. Oh, oh dear, sorry. Did you not hear me at all? Or uh, is no, this no, no, no. Okay. Uh, can you just slow down a bit because uh, too fast. <laughs> it's the uh, internet usually. Okay, okay I got that. I'm so sorry. Now. Thank you very much, Umu. I always forget about, um, I have to slow down because I think the connection cannot keep up with me. So I'll try to slow down and try and speak a little more calmly in a more calm and not so slow, but calm and paced voice. Dr. Noor Azza is very good at that. So I need to learn from her and Dr. Safia as well from ADAC. Both of them are really good at that, but I tend to get a little bit overexcited um, because I'm just so happy to be here with all of you. Thank you, Umu. Is this pace okay? Yes, it's okay. Oh, Eric, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so that pace is all right? Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, I was just saying just now that, you know, we are kind to other people. We are kind to our colleagues. We, at least I hope that those among us here are kind or try to be kind and empathetic um, to our colleagues and our family and our students. But we also need to be kind to ourselves. Um, really without being kind to ourselves, it's going to be difficult for us to be able to find kindness to others. Sometimes I think many of us overstretch ourselves. We are supervisors, we are um, family members, you know, uh, we're parents. And a lot of that takes a lot of toll because we're constantly giving to others. And when we give to others, that might take away from the strength or the energy that we have. But in order for us to be able to give to others, we need to be able to ensure that our own strength and our own energy is, is still strong. Um, sorry about that. Oops, sorry about that. Yeah, I'm like pressing buttons and then it's going all over the place. <laughs> okay, my apologies to everybody. Okay, here. Now, I hope that the, um, the research here, I've actually just taken it from the Action for Happiness website. 
But, you know, when we talk about happiness, it's not just, you know, mumbo jumbo, woo woo, trying to be happy and being cheerful all the time. That's not what happiness is. Happiness is a lot more than that. Happiness is actually a way of life where we are contented with ourselves, contented with others and kind to others and also being able to le live a life of meaning. And to do that, one of the most important things is we have to start with ourselves. I have to start with me. If I'm going to be able to be kind to someone or even if I'm going to be able to um, do a webinar, I know this is not a perfect webinar. I know that it can be better, but I'm not going to beat myself up about it. I'm doing the best that I can despite the constraints of time and maybe lack of skill, uh, maybe even lack of, you know, um, full expertise, but I do the best that I can and I will forgive myself for that. I don't need to be perfect. And I think that's very helpful. And I'm not just saying I as in me, Amira, but I as in all of us as, as individuals. And if you look at the research that I've actually uh, put up here, you know, self-compassion, being kind to yourself, being compassionate to yourself, being empathetic to ourselves, it's actually um, associated. This is like scientific research. Um, it is definitely associated with greater happiness, um, greater optimism and hope, curiosity. Curiosity is very, I think, useful for us in academia because it really helps us to be curious about the research that we're doing, to be curious about the topics that we're teaching to our students. And through that curiosity, we learn more and then we want to share more. But in order to be curious, we first need to be kind and happy um, with ourselves and kind and compassionate to ourselves. So in addition to helping us to be, as I said just now, happier, more optimistic, more hopeful, more curious, being compassionate to ourselves or practicing self-compassion um, is also good for making us resilient. Life is not a bed of roses. We all know that. Um, there are a lot of things, a lot of challenges that we have to go through. Sometimes there are things that we don't expect will happen and suddenly it happens to us and we have no other choice but just to live through it. Um, those kinds of things, you know, even things that we might be going through right now, pressures and deadlines and commitments and worrying about our KPIs, all of these things, they sap energy out of us. You know, they, they really, they can bring us down. Um, I don't know. I was pretty down uh, the first week of March, but, you know, um, we can't stay down because if you stay down, it's just going to spiral down. So we got to do things to actually bring ourselves back up because other people may be able to help us. Other people may be, may be able to cheer us on. And, but then we have to be our number one cheerleader. So, you know, being kind to yourself, being compassionate to yourself is really important to bring up yourself um, resilience. And, um, okay, so definitely someone just shared uh, that, yes, everybody was down in March. <laughs> And also down, I think, for the past uh, one year, 12 months uh, or so. But yes, we all survived the MCOs and the lockdowns and the first, you know, the first experience of full online teaching. That was really hard for all of us. Working from home was very hard for some of us, um, but we survived that. And whatever that's come this year, we're going to survive that as well. If we are kind to ourselves and we accept our limitations and don't beat ourselves up about it, but also accept our strengths and know that we have strengths that we can actually use and make it even stronger. Um, for example, for me, myself, I'm sorry, I'm talking about myself, not, not because of anything, simply because uh, I'm not the best example, but I just know myself the best uh, out of all of you. I know myself the best, so I can share about myself. And please do share in the chat as well. Um, you know, as I mentioned just now, I'm not going to beat myself up over having to do things last minute, although it's very stressful, but I accept it. And um, I'll just do the best that I can with it. Don't know whether that's a very good example. <laughs> so um, let's also look at. Um, there are, this is taken, this calendar here, this is actually taken from the Action for Happiness um, website. Now, I'll, I'll tell you a little secret, not so much of a secret. I've actually compiled in here uh, 
things that are being done on a monthly basis at the Action for Happiness. So the Action for Happiness movement, they have something called monthly get-togethers. Um, we did a couple of those at ADAC, and I'm hoping that with this webinar today, we can restart these uh, monthly get-togethers. And what they do is they have a theme for every month, and the theme for every month could be something like self-care and acceptance, or um, I think this is the theme for September, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the theme for July is resilience. The theme for March is mindfulness. And for every month, there is a calendar that Action for Happiness sets out, which tells us or which gives us ideas of 30 things or 31 things or 29 things, depending on the number of days there are in a year. But they give us some ideas about small little actions that we can do to make ourselves happier and also maybe to spread a little joy um, to others around us among our sphere of influence. So for keeping calm with self-care, one of the things that we can do, if this is something that you feel is um, an issue that you really need to find a way to keep calm or you really need to find a way to be kind to yourself, uh, be compassionate, be loving to yourself. These are some small steps that you can see from the calendar, which we'll be sharing. Um, I'll be sharing the slides and I'll also be sharing the link to the uh, Action for Happiness website. We'll do that. I think uh, Uma will be helping with that once everybody, I'll share some in the link later um, in the chat, but also we will share all of these resources that I have, the full ones. We'll share that through, um, I think, email once we get back your feedback form for today's webinar. So just to take a look, you know, there's just some, some steps that we can do, like for example, um, we could take one day and just remind ourselves that self-care, taking time for ourselves, taking time for exercise, taking time for sleep, taking time to write our own papers, even though we have so many other deadlines and documents that we owe to other people, but taking that time to spend a little bit of time for our own writing or our own research, um, taking time to take time out, you know, take a walk. All of that is important. It's not being selfish, but it's essential for keeping our energies and keeping our love for ourselves and our love for others alive. So that's just one small thing that we, we can remember that you can probably remind yourself, say, perhaps um, on one day. Um, for example, if we look at Friday number four here, forgiving ourselves uh, when things go wrong and not beating ourselves up over mistakes um, and just saying, it's okay. If I'm gonna forgive somebody else for their mistakes, I can forgive myself for my mistakes too and I can learn from it. So that's one more thing that we can we can do. Uh, we could also even, you know, um, ask a friend to cheer us up. If we're really, really down and you just feel like beating yourself up, find a good friend and ask them and say, can you tell me one thing that's good about me? And they probably will end up telling you 10, <laughs> um, but make sure that you find a good friend who can do that. So these are just some small things that we can do to find acceptance within ourselves and also to practice self-care. Now, I will be sharing this, so hopefully it might be useful for some of us. Now, just moving on, uh, we're just gonna, I'm just going to go through this, this one very quickly. My hope is that after I finish through my slides, we're going to go into some breakout rooms. And you can choose to either work on self-care in that breakout room, or you can choose to work on some of the other uh, things that I'll be talking about, like resilience, um, optimism, uh, what else? There's mindfulness. There's about six things that we'll be covering or looking at today. And there are these very short 10, 15 minute exercises that we can do in groups. Um, so hopefully we can do that in the breakout room. So if your breakout room decides that you want to go and look into self-care and acceptance, these are some of the things that um, you can do. Now, I know that not everybody is, you know, comfortable or, or maybe familiar with doing things like mindfulness exercises or gratitude exercises, um, but that's okay. You know, you can just read the directions and just try it out in a 
sphere or in a little zone of um of what I hope is a safe zone, a supportive zone with two or three other colleagues uh, and friends from from our from the participants that we have here today. So, for example, here for self care, one thing that we can do when we get into that breakout room is um, maybe somebody from there can start off and just invite everybody to breathe. Now, if you are an expert on mindful or guided breathing, that would be wonderful. If you don't have any experience with that, that's okay. All you need to do is just keep calm and breathe for a couple of long breaths um, and see how that feels. And another thing that we can also do uh, in that breakout room, if you're going to be looking at self-care, is to just turn to the other people in the same room with you and ask and share with them one thing that you appreciate about yourself. So don't worry about being boastful. This is going to be a safe space. Let's not judge one another. But just think about something that you are happy about of yourself and share that with um, somebody else. And it doesn't have to be big. You know, it doesn't have to be like, oh, I won a great big national award. If it is, that's fine. But it can be something as small as, um, I am so happy that I can speak without a script. Uh, and I am very grateful for that. And that's something that you can share with others. Or you could share that I'm so happy that I can read a journal article in a very short while and understand everything. Or it can be that I am very happy that, um, and I really appreciate that I am very, very disciplined and I can always do my work and submit my deadlines way before the deadlines early. So appreciate yourself and share that with the people in your group. Okay. Um, I'll move on now. If we have time, I'll try to and maybe uh, we'll do this together in a whole big group if we can shortly. Okay, so now let's move on to... Okay, um, in the slides, you're probably scrolling through it if you are in the full MS Teams. You'll also see that um, there is a box here where we can actually do a group discussion for 30 minutes. Um, so if you choose to do that, you can do that as well. So in the example for self-care, I'm not sure whether we'll have time because very often discussions that are set for 10 minutes sometimes do end up growing, which is great because it means that we're sharing and we are connecting and we are I guess in a way, um, creating more joy and creating more sharing, that can happen. So the 10 minutes may very well, you know, like blow up into 15 or 20 minutes. So the 30 minute discussion might be a little bit too big, but if you feel, if in the group later on, you feel that it's something that you want to do and it's important, uh, maybe you can try it out. Um, except that I have to apologize in advance that we probably won't be having 30 minute uh, breakout or sharing circles simply because it's a little bit difficult to do that uh, for so many topics and also because we have just one and a half hours left and we're doing this online which is always a little bit um, of a challenge. It's always nicer whenever we're doing these things to do it in person but if we can't do it that's okay there's always a solution so doing it online and having these breakout rooms is one solution. If we don't have the breakout rooms, we can probably even like create temporary WhatsApp groups to do that. So there's always a solution somehow. We just have to be open to it to find it. Okay, so I'm gonna move on now to um, another thing that we can do or we can practice to help keep calm. And this is about resilience or jumping back after we've fallen or after we've been crushed or after we've just gone through something that really takes um, you know the wind out of us that really exhausts us. So resilience is um, some of you are probably more more you know know more about this than I do. I'm just somebody who's interested in happiness and I'm someone who's trying to practice it for myself, but I am in no way an expert. But I think resilience is important because um, resilience is basically, you know, once there, there's going to be, or there have already been so many things that we have gone through in our life, perhaps in our career, perhaps even in the past year, or even in the past three months <laughs> um, of this new year, that, you know, you just kind of like feel crushed or you just kind of like feel, like 
you can't get up or there is no hope. Um, perhaps, you know, a paper, a very important paper that you need got rejected. Um, that's painful after pouring so much work into like, you know, redoing and amending the paper after several reviews. Um, perhaps um, a promotion that we hoped for didn't come through. Um, perhaps we lost something that was very valuable to us. When things like this happen, you know, it feels like we can lose hope sometimes, but if we allow that to happen, that's going to affect the rest of how we're going to be living our life in UM and in our family and just basically, you know, life as it is. So resilience and learning how to get up after you fall um, is an important skill that going to be very useful for us, I think, um, in our careers as well as in our lives. And it's not just about us um, by ourselves, but resilience can also, being resilient, being strong, being able to, you know, get back up after you fall, it can also be something that can help our relationships with others. Within a team, for example, um, sometimes, you know, in our PTJs, Maybe there's some really, really difficult things that we have to go through as a team, but being kind to one another and trying to find ways to help one another to sort of like climb back up, that is going to help us. And as the research has shown, you can see here, I've shared two, uh, again, from the Action for Happiness website, it can help to transform um, relationships. Um, it can help us to let go of things that are not worth it. It can help us learn and it can help us to grow both as individuals and also, um, you know, as members of a team, members of a group, um, or even as um, a family member. And apart from that, um, if we are looking at trying to be resilient, that just makes us, you know, more optimistic. It makes us more hopeful and when that happens there's a science behind it which i cannot quote right now because i don't know what it is but i know i've seen um a couple of papers that have talked about how when we are being open to trying to rather than uh, ruminating and just thinking oh life is so bad this is so horrible um it's okay to do that for a little while but then just saying that i'm not gonna let this beat me i'm not gonna let this get me down um if no one else takes care of me, I'll take care of myself. I will get up and do that. That actually widens up our brain so that we are more able to see solutions and we are more able to see opportunities and take advantage of opportunities. And also it makes us kinder because we are in a better state. So we're in, when we are in a better state, we are more able to be kind and um to be compassionate to the people around us, including our family members, our students, our colleagues, and also others, you know, within people that we happen to see uh, or people that we bump into, or just somebody on the street that might need, you know, just one ringgit or two ringgit. Um, when we're in that right state of mind, we tend to be kinder. So resilience is one of the important things that can help us to <laughs> keep calm in this very, very frantic life that we have. And of course, here, there are some suggestions, some small actions or small reminders to ourselves that we can do in order to help us to jump back up when we have um, fallen down or climb back up um, if we've fallen down, say, a really, really steep hole. So, for example, uh, you can see that uh, one of the things that uh, we can think of is right now, maybe many of us are thinking, I can't, um, you know, with like, I've got so much to do. I don't think I have enough time in 24 hours and I don't have like enough time to do it in 365 days. So thinking I can't will mean that I cannot do it. But using a growth mindset that's number three you can see that um under the friday if we try to use a growth mindset and thinking that um i can't yet then at least we'll be able to start somewhere we will be able to achieve a little bit even if we don't achieve um 100 it's like reaching for the stars um if you reach for the stars you may not 
you may not get the stars, but you would definitely get way higher than your own roof um, if we try to do that. So that's one of the things that we can sort of like adapt or adopt um, this mindset that it's not that I cannot do it. It's just that I cannot do it yet. It's, I am not failing. It's just that I have not um, succeeded yet. And yet will actually, um, that's the key word, just saying that it has not happened yet means that it will happen. And that kind of like gives us hope um, to, to soldier on and, and to push through. And some other exp uh, examples that uh, we can see here is uh, if you look at number 21, if you can't change something, there's a lot of things external to us that we cannot change. Um, you know, there are things that we wish could be different, but maybe we are not in a position to change it. Maybe because we don't have um, the resources uh, or we don't have um, the permissions to change things. So if we can't change things, the only way or the best thing to do is change the way that we think about things, change the way that we think about new challenges. You know, it could be that, oh, this new challenge is coming. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm going to be crushed. I'm going to be gone. Um, we could change that to maybe this new challenge is coming. Um, I am going to try. If I, it's not going to crush me. If I can get it, I'll get it. If I can do it, I'll do it. If I can't, that's fine. That's not the end of me. There are other things that I am good at and there are other things that I can do um, to, to achieve my goals and also to make me appreciate myself. So I will share this and hopefully one out of these 31 suggestions or small actions might be able to help us to be more resilient um, and to jump back from whatever that might be bringing us down. Okay. Now, uh, here is, uh, this is something that you might want to take a look at later during the um, breakout room. So one of the things that you could do if you get into a breakout room and you decide that you want to talk about jumping back, about being resilient, uh, one of the things that you can do and share around with your group is to write down a gift that you have. Of course, um, this is telling you to do it you know, every day, but we only have maybe uh, 10, 20 minutes together in the breakout room. But it's a start. You can start today and write down what gift that you have um, that recent challenges have you know, given to you and write down another gift that you have the next day. So I'll just share one right now. Um, one gift that I have received from, I think just having so much work to do is that I am learning to be self-compassionate. I am very, very kind to myself now, which I was not, um, you know, many years ago, but over time, every single difficulty and you know extra deadline and missed deadlines um or missed opportunities or even you know things that i hoped for that i didn't get uh or things that i did that didn't go so well as i expected the gift that i got from those challenges i think is that i've just become kinder to myself um and I just love myself a little bit more. So I'm very, very grateful for that gift. So hopefully you can also be doing something similar like that if you think it might be helpful for you. And of course, if your group feels that you have more time, you could also maybe um, do the discussion. Again, it's up to the group, but then you know we'll see uh, how much time that we have. So I'm just going to scroll through to the next slide. Um, now, the next thing that we want to talk about, remember, it's three things today. It's number one, to be, um, what was that again? <laughs> to stay calm. Secondly, to be wise. And thirdly, to be kind or to stay kind. So being wise. Um, some of the things that we can do to be wise is to practice mindfulness and also to cultivate uh, an optimistic mindset. Now, some people are born, you know, just very calm, very mindful, and very optimistic. And some people are just a little bit more frantic and a little bit more um, pessimistic. But these 
characters or characteristics that we have, they're not set in stone. There are things that we can do to actually teach ourselves and change the grooves and, and, and connections in our brain to help us to be a little bit more mindful than our natural or our um, base level and also to help us to be a little bit more optimistic than our base level. So we'll look at mindfulness first, although we're not going to spend too much time on that. Um, mindfulness is basically about being aware of the present moment and accepting and calmly being in the present moment. And um, Thich Nhat Hanh is actually one of the uh, leading gurus of mindfulness, um, although many of the uh, more contemporary, you know, non, uh, more, more circular, more contemporary practices of mindfulness are learning from him. And, and he says that the best way to take care of the future is to take care of the present. And that basically just means focusing on the present, focusing on what we're doing right now, and focusing on the experience that we are having um, right now. So right at this very moment, we could be worrying about um, 101 things that we need to get done. I, I have that list, and I'm sure many of you do as well. But we are my, if we are mindful and just focusing right now in this present moment where there's 50 of us gathered here, we're not here together physically, but there is some connection online. And we're all just wanting to be calm, wanting to be kind, wanting to be wise. And if we just listen and... and um, sort of like, I'm not asking you to pay attention to me, but what I'm saying is that um, focus on what we're doing now so that we can actually get it done and we'll worry about whatever else that needs to be done after we do what I'm doing right now. So for this two hours, I am not worried. I am not thinking about all of the other things that I need to get done. Um, and I know that some of you here actually are probably waiting for documents or for, for some kind of work that I need to pass to you. But um, I'm going to take this time. I'm going to take this two hours just to focus on feeling and also sharing about how we can be more happy and how we can spread a little bit more joy to each other. And I will deal with the other things and the deadlines and the other things that I owe some of you here. I'll deal with that later after I'm done with it. And when I deal with it, I'll deal with it one um, at a time. It's something that has taken me time to learn. I'm still learning it, not quite mastering it, but I make an effort to do that just to be mindful and just be in the present moment and just focus on the one thing that I'm doing. Um, and that can be helpful. It's not perfect. I'm still not fully mindful and not fully present all the time. But uh, hopefully, the more I practice it, the more I will be. So apart from, you know, just focusing and, and being there with what that you're doing, um, you know, there are other things that we can do with their other mindfulness practices. We're going to be learning about that if you get to join us next Friday together with um, the chairman of the Malaysian Mindfulness Association. So he'll actually be guiding us through a practice. Um, let me just show you where I think I showed some of you early on who came on early um, about the mindfulness practice that we will have keep calm be wise and stay kind stress reduction for busy academics so just a really quick uh, reminder if you are going to be joining us for that particular workshop next friday try the best way to get the most out of the workshop would be to uh, find a quiet spot and a comfortable spot where you can uh, join in the practices. But if you aren't able to do that, that's okay as well. Wherever that you'll be sitting, um, just try and you know enjoy learning about the skills and you can try out the practice uh, on your own, maybe at a different time when there is, you know, when you have a bit more space and a bit more quiet. Okay, so um, I think there's somebody with uh, who accidentally unmuted. Uh, Umu, can you help me to... Okay, all right, thank you so much for that. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna pass through a little bit now. And let's take a little bit, uh, a little look at 
optimism. So I was saying just now that, you know, optimism, some people are just born more optimistic, you know, those babies that just come out smiling and they're forever happy. And then some people are born just a little bit pessimistic, a little bit miserable, you know, the babies that come out wailing and complaining about everything. Um, Kamira, you okay? You are muted. We seem okay, to sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> okay, thank you. I don't know how that happened, but that's okay. We're back. Um, so you know, optimism, as I was saying earlier on, that it's actually something that really just kind of like widens our brain. The more optimistic that we are, uh, the more opportunities that we find and the stronger we can be and the more resilient that we can be um, as well. And people who are optimistic, they tend to be happier, uh, healthier, and they cope better when they're facing um, tough times. And one of the, now, like I said, you know, uh, it, it may seem like some people are just normally optimistic and some people are just a little bit pessimistic, but there are things that we can do to actually build our optimism. Um, so some of the things that we can do is to definitely to practice self-care and self-compassion. Uh, some of the other things that uh, we can do is to be to celebrate our accomplishments, no matter how small the accomplishments are, even if it's an accomplishment what you think may be small, like I managed to arrive to some place on time today. That's an if that's an accomplishment for you, celebrate it. You tell yourself, "Good job! I'm so happy that I managed to actually um, arrive on time." This means that I can arrive on time, and in the future, I probably will be arriving on time even more often. So you're already building this idea of, um, of you know, like I can do it. I'm optimistic and I'm hopeful. And other things that we can do, I should probably share with you the uh, calendar with some of the suggestions, all right? How we can um, be more optimistic. We can actually choose to be optimistic. Uh, we can choose to be fatalistic. Um, we can choose to be pessimistic. And sometimes we do feel bad. Sometimes we do feel, you know, frustrated. We feel down, we feel hopeless. Um, and it's okay to feel that. We do need to also, we don't beat ourselves up for feeling that way. We're human beings. Um, we have to accept that we do go through these feelings that are painful, that can be very negative, that can really bring us down. But we can also bring ourselves out from that, sorry, bring ourselves out from that feeling and choose to be optimistic. Um, optimism is something that you know, we can make as a choice. And some of the things that we can do, which really would help, and I know this for a fact, because um, I am actually naturally pessimistic. So those of you who may know me very well or who are close to me would know that I do tend to get a little bit pessimistic. Um, I get, you know, a little bit like thinking, oh my God, this is gonna be horrible. Um, and actually even, you know, Many years ago, before I started learning about these ways of building resilience, these ways of actually um, building optimism, I was a very pessimistic person. Everything that I thought could go wrong, I will think about that, and I focused on that. And I think for a very long time, I saw the world as a very bleak place. Um, but learning about the signs of happiness reading about things um like going into the action for happiness website just one of the things that i did i read a lot of research on positive psychology i'm i'm, lear I'm a self-learner in positive psychology and i also read a lot of the books on neuroscience and through my four years of learning about um learning about basically positivity, um, happiness, and joy, and resilience, and strength. Through all that time, I think it has helped me now to become a more optimistic person. 
and it also helps me to be a more hopeful person and it's actually turned me around from being a really pessimistic person to being one um i, I think i'm pretty optimistic even though i have my downtime so those of you uh like you know people who know me well will know that i get very very down sometimes but i don't stay down very long i used to before i could be like down for like entire month and it was really horrible but because now i'm using these practices that you know you can actually see in these calendars and i've been practicing those for about four years and when i get down i just get back up um and it's a skill that we can actually build and we can actually learn somebody um recently said to me oh i am so happy i'm like the happiest person <laughs> and i think that that person said that because um it's a very dear prof. Uh, so I think the prof said that because he'd only seen me um, being very, very happy uh, doing webinars. And I actually am so happy doing webinars. I am so excited doing it. It gives me, you know, a lot of rush. It gives me a lot of energy and it gives me a lot of optimism. And that's also one of the things, if you look, I think, somewhere in this calendar that um, that is recommended. Do something that you enjoy and that will bring you joy and that will bring you happiness and it will also make you more optimistic because then you can celebrate the thing that you're doing and it kind of like sets the tone um, for the next hour or for the rest of the day. So some of the things that you can do to be optimistic, um, these are just little practices. If we look at number 31, um, think of three things. You can write them down. Think of three things that give you hope for the future. That's one thing that could help over time. It may not happen immediately the first time you do it, but if you keep doing it over the course of several days or over the course of a couple of weeks, over time your brain will learn to actually be hopeful. So we have to actually teach our brains. We teach students um, and we, you know, we teach students, we supervise students, we give them skills, but we can also teach ourselves and teach our brains. Our brains up here, that's always, you know, deciding for us whether we feel bad or we feel good, we feel optimistic or we feel hopeful. Um, we can teach our brains to do that. And these are some of the things that, you know, we can do in order to actually set that, set our brains up so that our brains become more optimistic. Um, so yeah, I, I want to go through all of these, but I think I probably shouldn't take too much of the time. Like I said, I will share it again later. And if anybody, you know, if you find, if you come across any one of these that you're a little bit confused about or you want to maybe know more about it or find out how others are doing about it, feel free um, to, to just connect with me and maybe we can share and talk about that. Okay, so um, for the breakout, uh, some exercise that you can do um, to actually build optimism. Uh, this is something that you know we can probably uh talk about or you can try it out even though i know it's not exactly you know um you're not at home you're not doing this for the for the whole morning but you can try to wake up with a purpose so of course you're all already awake but what you can do during that 10 15 minute breakout that we'll have is you can try to start the rest of the day we've got another half day left after we finish this webinar and start the rest of the day um with purpose and just imagine you after you come out from this webinar um what are you going to do in the next six hours you know you don't even have to look at 24 hours you could if you want to and um what are you going to do with this brand new uh six hours and just imagine you know although you may not be able to do it but just imagining it um and maybe setting a plan for when you will do it perhaps you're going to go and take a break perhaps you're going to go to the movies perhaps you're just going to go and sleep um you plan to do it so that will also help you to kind of like feel your optimism and hope that you will on the date that you plan to do this be able to enjoy it and of course, um, another thing that you could do, which is also recommended, I think, in uh, the other, another one that we looked at earlier, so the exercise that we do is gratitude. Um, is again, to share with somebody in your group something that you feel proud of, that you appreciate yourself for. Okay. Now, let's take a look at, um, 
staying kind. Now, this is probably something that's super duper important in the environment that we are um, finding ourselves in. I put down here three things that I found from the uh, movement, uh, the Action for Happiness movement of how we can try to stay kind. One is through friendship and relating to one another. One is by doing good, just by practicing kindness. And another one is through altruism or giving. So I think because of the time, we'll just focus on two. Uh, we'll look at friendship and relating and doing good um, and kindness to others. And, you know, we live in a very challenging time, um, both, you know, in terms of the the world as it is now with COVID-19, with um, the economy, with even the environment. So we can think about all the horrible things that happen uh, or, or, or all the horrible things that are happening, but we don't need to focus on that. But we do need to accept that the world that we live in can be a very challenging one. Now, there are things that we can do, like what we talked about earlier on, on you know, staying calm and being wise, and the things that you know, we can do to stay calm and be wise, that we can do for ourselves. And of course, we have to take care of ourselves um, so that we are able to be there for others. It's not something that's that easy to do. Um, I'm struggling with it too, but we have to at least you know, focus on us first, not to be selfish, but so that we can be there for others um, you know, with abundance. So that we are there for others, for our family members, for our students and our colleagues from a place of abundance rather than from a place of scarcity where we have too little energy, we have too little optimism or we have too little time. Something I think that I'm having, but um, you know, maybe it's something that I need to cultivate to learn how to actually come from a place of abundance. And to do that, we look after ourselves by staying calm and being wise. But in the work that we do, especially in the academic life that we live, I think many of us here, um, 50 plus of us here today are from academia. It's not, um, you know, it's not a bed of roses. Uh, people sometimes, one of the things that I sometimes hear, and I think it's so funny, people will find out I'm a lecturer and they'll go, oh, you're a lecturer. Wow, that's so nice. You have so much time. You only teach like four or five hours a week and the rest of the week you're free and you have three months off when the students are on break. <laughs> And um, yeah, I can either laugh about that or get very, very bitter about it. But we all know here in UM and also in other universities as well that being an academic, um, especially in this day and age, is a very, very tough, um, very, very challenging um, career. And what can help apart from being kind to ourselves, what can be really, really helpful is to stay kind to the people around us, to be kind, to be empathetic, just to be nice, really. Um, it doesn't hurt. Be kind, be nice, you know, be respectful of our colleagues. Um, be try and do that with our students, um, even with our our bosses, our heads or our deans. Um, because you know, whatever that we're going through, although some of the people at who may be more senior than us, it may seem like they are, you know, um, above the fray and they're doing great uh, because of their position. But they're probably going through the exact same things, um, the exact same frustrations and difficulties um, and, you know, challenges that we're going through. And what one person is going through um, in terms of difficulties or challenges is probably what somebody else is going through as well, no matter what their position or their station is. So the one thing that we can do to help make our, our UM community um, a slightly more happy, a slightly more joyful place is by starting with the people around us, by starting with um, our colleagues in our department or our PTJ, by starting with the supervisory students that we have, um, you know, this three, five year relationship with 
um, our students um, and also our students that we meet um, online for now, but the students that we're teaching for our courses. And most definitely to start off with the people that we meet and we see every day. Sometimes it may not be that easy. There are people that we may want to reach out to them. We may want to try and um, build a connection with them, but they may have a wall and push us away. Um, if you have the energy to break through that wall, try. If you don't, mm -hmm. don't beat yourself up, but be kind to the other people around you who would be appreciative and accepting um, of your friendship. So, you know, research has shown that having friends, having social support, being part of a community, it's not just, you know, it's not just something that's nice to have, but it can also be something that's essential for our health um, and for our well being. Uh, people have, there's actually been research that's been done showing that the people that live the longest tend to be those, the live the longest and the happiest um, tend to be those people who have good social connections with others. So sometimes reaching out to others is good, not just because it's being kind to other people and helping to make our PTJ or our department a more friendly, kinder place, but it's also good for us individually as persons. I am so grateful and I'm so happy to know the people that I know in UM, uh, friends from different departments and faculties, and most especially my colleagues and the team at ADEC, because having these people, having friends, having someone that you can sort of like text or someone that you see, a, you know that they're there and they know you, you can say hello. Um, it helps with, you know, the sense of community and the sense that we're all in this, although our individual KPIs and, you know, all our personal problems, that may be um, individual, but we are together in the communities. We're kind of like all in this together we may have our own journeys, but we can always be somebody who kind of like makes the other person's journey slightly better, slightly easier, um, or slightly a little bit more joyful. You know, caring for other people is actually good, not just for us, but it, if we can actually create um, an environment of support and help for one another, for the people around us, especially in our PTJ, that will help them to do their jobs better. That will help them to maybe think of ways that they can help us with our job and make our work and our life at work a little easier as well. So reaching out and relating to others and just being kind um, by being a friend is something that has multiple um, positive effects, uh, like a ripple effect, I think, that can really help everyone. So this here is, of course, um, 28 tips. This actually comes from the February uh, get together calendar from Action for Happiness. So there are 28 tips here on how to relate and how to build um, friendships. So given the pressures that many of us are facing and maybe even the uncertainties that some of us are facing uh, with our work and our career and life in general, you know, um, whenever we can, it doesn't have to be a big thing, whenever we can, just do an act of kindness to make life easier for someone else. So that's number three. If you look at the calendar under when it's day, it's number three. And the act of kindness can be as small as just smiling at someone and saying hello. I need to remember to do that more often. <laughs> but that can be as small as that. Um, it can even be something bigger as well if you feel that you have the capacity to do it. If you see a, a colleague who is struggling with their work, maybe you have some information that can help them or you have some knowledge that can help them, um, you know, maybe share it. Uh, I understand all of us have limited time and so much to do and we cannot maybe spend two, three, or even one hour um, doing someone else's work or doing a favor to someone else. But sometimes it can be as simple as showing someone or telling someone, okay, um, if you need to find out more, or you don't know how to do this particular document, uh, you can go and look for it in a certain website. So it's simple things like that, that, you know, just helping someone 
so that their day or their life gets slightly easier. And that's just a little bit of kindness that we can spread around to everyone. If you are in a position where you can maybe assist somebody like um, allowing them to join your research group so that they can have um, a research group that they're a part of. Or if you have um, a paper that maybe you need a little bit more work on, but you're too busy, perhaps you can get someone to join in as a co-author and let them write a little bit or fix the paper a little bit, things that you don't have time to do and share the points. You know, uh, we have to share the KPI points for co-authorship now, but if you are able to do that, if you have a lot of papers, spread it around a little bit if you can to people who are struggling, who are unable to come out with papers by themselves or who are unable to um, find a research grant by themselves. So those are, of course, I realize um, bigger things, but you know, any act of kindness would go a long way because when one person feels that they're appreciated or that they're helped or that their colleague is looking out for them, not only will they want to naturally help us and look out for us too in the future, but they will also be kind and helpful to others um, in the department, others who will come after and they'll probably pay it forward. And over time, that's how we can build a kinder and a more cohesive um, and hopefully as well, a more productive and high performing team when everybody is happy and everybody is willing to reach out uh, to one another and to help one another out. And then collectively, um, we get a lot more done together. So I know it sounds a little bit, um, you know, hope, well, it's, it is optimistic. So yes, I do believe that that is something that we can do to help make life a little bit easier for each other. And hopefully that will mean that all of us will gain from it um, over time. Now, uh, this here is of course some practical things that you can think of. Uh, you can think of doing this uh, or discussing it in the breakout groups, but definitely it's something that you probably want to try and do um, on your own when you have time. One small practice that we can do, uh, one small action that we can do to just reach out and relate and be a friend. Uh, some of the things that these are actually coming from science of happiness, from neuroscience, from positive psychology, things like writing a gratitude letter, um, make time to write a letter to somebody that you care about or someone that has impacted your life, uh, perhaps somebody that, you know, had mentored you or um, had helped you in some way in UM, write a gratitude letter to, to thank them. Um, and let them know how much you appreciate it. Now, some people may be shy to do that. Research has shown that the gratitude letter exercise is a little bit more difficult for Asians because of our introvert culture. And also for, um, it's actually easier for extroverts and for people who are comfortable, you know, relating to one another. If you feel too shy to write the letter and give it to somebody, write the letter to someone, but keep it. Maybe one day you will get over your shyness and you'll be able to share it with them. Or maybe one day you might find that they are in a position where they really need, um, you know, some support. And then you can give them that gratitude letter then and not feel shy or embarrassed about it. Um, so that's one thing that we can do. And another thing which I absolutely, absolutely love is trying to find positive balance. Now, there's a lot of negativity that's flying around. Uh, you can find negativity very, very easily anywhere you go. You can turn on the TV um, and watch the news. You can go into a, a, a WhatsApp or Telegram group where people are gossiping or complaining. Um, even we ourselves do it. We complain about, uh, about things. We complain about people. We complain about, um, you know, ourselves. Well, it turns out that for every single one negative thing that you think, you know, you complain, we criticize, we judge. For every one of those things that we do, we need many, many more positive things in order to actually 
make ourselves feel better. Otherwise, we're just going to feel worse and we're just going to make the people around us uh, feel pretty bad as well. So one of the things that we can do, um, the science is actually divided about the actual number of positive things, like the ratio of positive things that we should say or think versus the ratio of negative things that we had already said or already things, uh, already thought. But, you know, definitely it's not one to one. If you say one bad thing, you have one conflict with somebody and then say one nice thing to the person, um, that's probably not going to cut it. We're going to have to do more than that. If we have maybe one conflict with someone or accidentally said something mean to somebody, um, to counter that, we're going to have to do maybe, or we should do, we sh not something that we have to do, but we should find four or five or six or ten, or we can start with four positive things or positive um, acts to help balance or neutralize that negative thing that we may have said. So one, um, one exercise that we could try to do is aim to say at least four positive things to people for every one negative judgment or complaint or criticism, including constructive criticism <laughs> that uh, we may have shared. Um, this is something that we can try out in groups and we can definitely try out on our, on our own as well. And um, of course, there's also a longer group discussion, so I will I will let you read this uh, later. Um, now, finally, the last thing, which really covers basically all of it, is to stay kind. It's just to do good, um, doing good to others, being kind to others, like you know we discussed just now, it actually makes us feel better and it's actually good for our well-being and our mental health. I feel good about myself if I've done good for somebody else. Uh, and I'm actually, you know, I might even be, be benefiting from it a lot more than the other person is. Um, being mean or being selfish, um, that sometimes seems like the smart thing to do. But over time, you know, you probably don't get a good feeling. Uh, maybe you have a neutral feeling about being not being kind or just being uh, just looking out just for for me and not really wanting to bother with what everybody else is doing. Um, maybe sometimes we feel that we need to do that. But there is no, oh, I feel good. I'm only looking out for myself and I don't care about anybody else. I feel so wonderful. That's very rare. Um, it's more of, you know, I'm just going to look out for myself and I'll get what I want. Um, that does happen. And sometimes it's understandable that we do need to do that. But for every one time that we need to do that, perhaps we can try one, two, or four um, other times where we try to also consider other people, especially our colleagues and our students around us. So this calendar is a tip of 31 things that we can do um, to try and do good or to share kindness. So for example, uh, like just now we mentioned about, you know, offering help to someone who might be in difficulty. And something easy that you can do, sometimes offering help might seem, you know, like you don't have enough energy or time um, or resources to do that. But something easy that we can do to spread kindness and stay kind and do good is we could give kind comments to people around us. And we do that, it'll make their day a little better. And they may also do the same thing to others and, you know, create a little ripple effect there. Uh, we could also do things like... Um, support a charity or a cause or a campaign you really care about we're all very busy but a little you know if there's something that you really feel strongly about and you try to contribute a little bit to it at the end of the day you're not only doing good for others but you're also doing good um for yourself so i'll be i'll be completely honest right now me doing this webinar um with all of you here uh, I'm happy if I manage to share some things here that might be new for you, although I'm sure for many of you, some of these things are probably things that you already know and you're already practicing and you may even be, um, you know, researching about it or an expert on it or teaching others about it as well. Um, I'm happy that I get to do this with all of you. Uh, and I hope it's useful for everybody, but at the same time, you know, uh, I'm really excited and really happy and I'm feeling good about it. So it's, it's spreading good to others and I guess um, to myself as well. Uh, so 
Yeah. I should probably stop. Well, I bring too much about that. Okay, so um, to do good, uh, one practice that you can do in the breakout room is maybe you can um, talk about how you can uh, be a helper or what you have done perhaps in the past to help somebody. Um, and of course, you know, we can always be helping the less fortunate some way um, or the other, not, not necessarily in the way that is suggested um, in this action, but in any way that we can, because we do know that many people are suffering um, due to, you know, the past 12 months, the past one year plus uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic. And of course, with the things that we are having to do um, with our work and the pressures and the new things, um, the new commitments that we're going to have to do. Um, you know, a lot of people could use a little bit of kindness from from others. So that's something that we can try. Maybe we can talk about uh, during the breakout group. And um, now I will go through this. Now this is a coping calendar that Action for Happiness has uh, shared. So this is actually you know, if all the other calendars, there's like too many of them, if you want to have just one to help you cope um, and to help you keep calm and stay wise and be kind, this would be the calendar that you might want to keep. You might want to print it out and, and put it up over your desk or use it as a desktop on your computer. These are 30 actions that we can do to look after ourselves individuals ourselves and also to look other um to look after each other to look after other people around us in our ptj in our families um in our classes not just because of the global pandemic but simply because um we can simply because it's always a kind and a good thing to spread a little bit of joy and to be a little bit um kind to others and also to ourselves so um, I'm going to stop here. Let's get into now. Uh, if you are now, Umu, I'm going to need your help with this. Um, let's get into breakout groups. Uh, before we do that, um, I will give some guidelines to what you might be doing in the group. So generally in the breakout group, um, we'll try to limit it to between three to four people. Uh, not more than that. I think three would be just nice so that if somebody is not able to participate, then at least there are other two people who can talk to one another. Four is also okay, but online it's a little bit difficult to have, you know, five people in a group discussing in a short um, amount of time. So let's try to do that. Um, and what we would do is to, once you get into your groups, is to choose which one of the uh, you can look at this, there are six of these, these take action kind of cards. You can look at that and see which one perhaps you would like to adapt um, for your group discussion. And I wouldn't even call it a discussion really. It should be a group um, kind of like sharing and planning. I share what I have done or I plan, I share what I plan to do to take some action to either stay kind or be wise or um, stay calm and share that uh, with the group and hopefully maybe give each other's ideas and encourage one another. Um, so one of the things that we may want to do firstly is of course to greet each other and maybe when you get into the group, uh, introduce yourself and then um, say something about yourself that you appreciate and share that with the others in the group. If you happen to already know somebody in that group very well, maybe you happen to be in a group with your friend, feel free to say a kind thing about that person um, to her or him and also to the other group members. But that, of course, only if you know each other well. If you don't, that's all right. Just share about yourself and then go into decide uh, which of the three themes you would like to focus on discussing. Is it... Um, staying calm or is it being wise or is it um be being kind or staying kind so once you decide on that then you can decide on which of the because there's two in each um there's two blue cards of this there's two take action blue cards in 
stay calm and there's two in be wise and there's two in um, be kind or stay kind. So just choose which one that you want to do. And we'll have about 15 minutes um, for you to share. And after that, or while you are sharing, uh, you could also post to the Padlet, uh, you know, something that you have shared in the group or something good or something kind or hopeful that you hope to do or that you have done and hopefully that will inspire others to do the same thing. Okay, Umu, I'm going to need your help to set up the breakout rooms. Um, in the meantime, if anybody has any questions or comments, you could feel free to um, to share that in the chat. Uh, hi, Kamira. Hi, Umu. Okay, uh, the slide that you are talking about is the calendar, right? Is that correct? Um, the slide I'm talking about is actually this blue slide. But now that you mention it, okay, we're going to adjust things. The slide... Uh, I think maybe this calendar would be a good slide as well. So you can choose one of the slides, either the stay kind slide and do good, uh, the stay kind and do good calendar and choose something from there, or you can discuss that, or you can choose um, the stay kind and be a friend calendar or any of the other uh, four calendars that I shared. Yeah, that's a better, a better idea actually. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm going to, uh, okay, uh, let me confirm with you, uh, per group, uh, you need around three to five, is that correct? Can, um, I let's, that uh, can we make it three to four so that there's not too many people in one group? Right, okay. Um, all right, hold on. Uh, just in case if you are in your breakout room and you can't see the presentation, uh, you can still go to the teams and the presentation uh, the presentation is under file tab okay what i can also do is i actually did the presentation um on uh, what do you call it on a on my sorry on powerpoint online so i can also share a link to the presentation that i think everybody can see yeah sure Okay. Um, I'm going to break up the room now. Is that okay? Uh, yes, sure. Okay, all right. Okay. Oh, wait, sorry. Before that, if anybody has any questions, uh, do feel free to ask. Oh, sorry. I just noticed that there's something in the chat. Um, Oh, somebody was suggesting we can buy food or presents to someone. That would be nice. <laughs> okay, I hope this link will work. Yes, I've shared the link to the slide uh, using the slide title, Keep Calm, Stay Wise, Be Kind, and it's in the meeting chat in case you need it. Mm -hmm. The Tamira, uh, oh, sorry, yes, the Tamira. Uh, this is Dr. Duria. Oh, hi, Dr. Duria. Assalamualaikum. Yeah. Salam. Uh, I, I want to tell you two things. Number one, I'm I'm glad you're having this, but I have to leave because I have a, a meeting, scheduled meeting with 15 students. So it's going to be difficult to get other times, you know, to get all of yeah. them uh, on, on the same time, number one. Number two, just to share with you, because uh, recently uh, it was my uh, 60th birthday, okay? Um, no need to wish me, but just to tell you, I want to share something about how people, were, because of the MCO and, and it's difficult for people to see, you know, to just bump into each other and say, wishing me this and that. Instead, they, I was getting things that were sent to me by my former student especially and all that. Uh, and it's an idea, I want to highlight about the idea you mentioned about saying thank you. Uh, there are gifts that people send, but there are also those who send me notes with a small gift. I, I, it's, what I want to say is that 
that sharing of notes of of uh, when they write their thank uh, thank you notes to me, uh, it's very personalized, and I understand what they are saying uh, in terms of they try to thank me for the help that they feel that I have given them. You know, sometime in their life, and I agree with you that. Uh, not many people can do this for us, the Asian, but I think it meant more to me to get those notes compared to getting the gifts. So uh, th this is what I, I think it, it is a good thing, uh, a good practice that we should do. And I was just thinking, uh, you know, when I was receiving it, I, I felt touched by the words that they, they or the few things, you know, that, that they relate to their personal experience with me. I think that was very touching and uh, I think I will do the same for to other people. And I will write them a note with, if I want to give gifts, that's fine. But I think that notes are really actually very important. So just yeah. to share that with everybody before I go off. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Juria. That that is really nice. It's a real life um, yeah, example. Yeah. Happy yeah. belated birthday. Uh, okay, it's okay. Okay, okay. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to uh, fish I know, I know, but I wanted to, to say just that. To share with you, I mean, like, why I'm bringing this up. And I thought that was very nice. So, uh, I, I the, the notes, I thought, meant a lot more to me. And I plan to take pictures of it and, and, and keep it, you know, and to look at it. And as you said, it's part of being nice to, people are being nice to us, but it's also being nice to ourselves because we felt, you know, like, oh, okay, so I, I have done something good uh, that that matters to, to others, you know, something like that. It, it's, it's being kind to oneself also, I think. It brings that uh, situation. Yeah, that's so nice to hear. Thank you so much for sharing about that, Dr. Juria. Yes. I'm so glad you're still here in UM. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll be a fellow, uh, research fellow. I, I, uh, I have actually retired officially on my yeah. birthday. Uh, and, and, but uh, I will continue on as a research fellow. So I yeah. will still be able to join ADEC and uh, ADEC's activities, etc. Okay, okay, bye thank everybody. You. Hope, hope that helps uh, to tell you. Uh, uh, for somebody, I'm sure I'm the eldest in this group right now. Okay, and and how it, it's not just showing, uh, giving our thanks to to those yeah, the elderly, but also to you know whoever you think you should say thank you to. Uh, and I think there was something also. I mean, I I do not know about uh, other faith or whatever. Uh, but I know uh, in Islam, there's something about, you know, you s when you when you are something along the line of uh, to say thank to your creator, uh, you should also, you should thank to your, you know, the, the, the humankind and to mankind, sorry, to mankind. So if you by saying thank you, for example, thank you, Rata Mira. So it's also for organizing this. That's also our show of uh, gratefulness, gratitude to our creator. Wow. Wow. Like yeah? yeah th that is so true. Yeah, because we are appreciating everybody that you know, Allah's created and put into yes. our lives. So yes. I hadn't thought of that. Yes. <gasps> Yeah. I, I, if if one of these days I can find whether it's hadith or whatever, I'll uh, pass it on to you. Okay, bye people. I took too much time. Bye. Oh, no, no, not at all. Thank you, Dr. Duria. Bye. Bye. Hi, Kamira. Hey, Mu. Okay, can we break up room now? Yes. Okay. Because once I break up the room, they, they all will be leaving this meeting room oh understood okay, so okay. whatever you um, try to deliver they won't be hearing it okay understood so i'll see everybody um in uh okay uh 10 minutes or is that too short you think maybe 15 uh, minutes is that okay <laughs> uh, i i think it should be okay 
Okay, all right. So all we'll right, meet up right. again here in the main room at 11, before 11.45. All right. I'll okay. break up the room now. Okay, thank you, Umu. Hi, welcome back, everybody. Um, I just realized there were a couple of, uh, how many, one person, there was one room where there was only one person. I think I am so sorry uh, if you were alone in the room, but we couldn't like, we couldn't rescue you out until now. I'm so sorry about that. I think I should have probably planned this so that we have more than three or four in case um, other people leave so you won't be alone. So uh, my, my, my apologies for that. I'm so sorry. Uh, who here was alone in the room just now? I think that the co eating is alone just now. Oh dear. Okay. Uh, Dr. Min Yu, I think, raised your hand. Uh, but yeah, I saw a couple of people raise their hand. I think Dr. Hidaya, Dr. Nur Hidaya, was um, alone as well, was it? Yeah, I'm so sorry, everybody. This is a, the thing with the technology. Um, yeah, uh, my apologies, and uh, we'll try and not make the same mistake again next time, but I hope that you are back here and I hope that you're doing okay despite being alone for about uh, 15 minutes just now. Well, I just want to say welcome back to everyone. Thank you for staying on. Um, I know many people probably have had to, to go. Yeah, okay. I think uh, Dr. Ko Yi Chern also was alone as well. I, yeah, so sorry. Thank you. Thank you for understanding. Okay, well, um, well, welcome back. Uh, I think maybe now, can you all see me? Okay, I'm not sharing anything. So, Umu, are all the breakout rooms, um, have you called back all the breakout rooms? Yes, I just closed the breakout room, so they are all here. Okay, all right, that's how it works out. Okay, I see that. Uh, I think a lot of people have had to leave, um, so that's okay, but this is kind of nice. We have like a little cozy group for the next couple of minutes before we sign off at 12 o'clock. So can I just maybe invite, I hope it's okay if I call, uh, call your name. My apologies if I'm not calling the name correctly. Maybe if you can share a little bit um, of what your plans are. Um, so I'll just start, uh, let's see, I'll start with my friend. Dr. Safia, are you there, Dr. Safia? Mira, I'm here. Okay, hi, Safia. Hi. Do you did you manage to talk to anybody in the room just now? Yeah, I spoke to the Toshiba from the Department of Geography, um, and we sort of like uh, share about uh, the coping uh, mechanisms that we have, you know, in in order to. Uh, overcome our challenges at work. Um, one of the things that we use is actually, I think, uh, is the mindfulness. So basically both of us practice that uh, mindfulness where we try not to, you know, we, we keep grounding of what we're doing and then be in the moment, focus on the moment and not thinking too much things at the same time. And uh, like Dr. Shiba, uh, I think she shared about um, where she go for a walk uh, if she has, you know, if she's stressed out, so she didn't bring phone, did not bring anything, but just, you know, not even listen to music, just walk out <laughs> and, and um, listen to the, uh, you know, I mean, looking at the uh, flowers and stuff. And maybe Rati Shiba want to share something about, you know, your, your morning walk or something, perhaps. Yeah, actually, without knowing, uh, we were practicing mindfulness, you know. Um, when the things are like really um, getting stressed, so we just um, go for. I mean, I'll just go for a walk, or you know, um, and I can see. Um, sometimes I will pet the cat that is that I can see on the way. Then I feel I, I will feel uh, refreshed, and also like um, staying at the moment, just focusing on one thing, not looking at many things at the same time. So these are the things that. I think we were practicing just to keep ourselves happy. And, yeah. 
Oh, that's really nice. Thank you for sharing, Dr. Shiva um, and, and Dr. Safia. Uh, I actually took uh, recently, my father just introduced me to this uh, Hutan Rimba near Kerinci. So I went there a couple of weeks ago with my seven-year-old son and it was so nice. <laughs> so um, maybe I'll try that again after hearing about Dr. Shiva's walk because I think, uh, yeah, it was very, very nice. Thank you for sharing, Dr. Shiva and Dr. Safia. Uh, and don't, can don't I forget invite? to not bring your phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is that when you go into the the, the the hutan rimba, there's no signal, so you you really have no choice but not to use the phone. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, can I invite anybody else who would like to share? There were some that uh, a couple of people shared a little bit uh, on the Padlet. I'll just put that up. Um, in the meantime, anyone who would like to share, you can maybe unmute yourself since there's not many of us. Okay, I think everyone's a little bit shy. <laughs> so let me just share the, uh, I'm just going to try and bring up the Padlet. For some reason, I can't seem to find the bar. Okay, I've got it. So a few people, not too many, but that's okay. A few people shared some nice messages on the Padlet. So I'm sharing the Padlet wall now. It's available through the QR code and also the link that I shared in the chat earlier on. So somebody, oh, we didn't have names here, uh, but that's all right. So someone shared that true wealth is not out of the pocket, but out of the heart and out of the mind. Um, that's so true. And because of that, it's probably a lot easier even to be sharing and spreading that wealth. And someone also shared a really nice poster. Just imagine how different the world could be if we all spoke to everyone with respect and kindness. Um, that's something we could definitely start right here in UM. And we can just speak to everybody, to our colleagues and to each other with kindness and respect. And um, okay, the rest are just some sharings that I had. Oh, someone here hugs my kids all the time. If they're not around, I browse pics of them on my phone. That's always great. Kids are such a joy. A headache, but such a joy. I've got two. Um, yeah, they're just they're just great. So there's somebody else here who shared that meditation helps to focus us to be more mindful. And a nice poster. Keep calm. Let's meditate. Well, keep calm next week. We're going to be doing that definitely during the mindfulness practice. Um, yep, again, about mindfulness, empty our mind, be formless and shapeless like water, and that is so helpful. It just, just really makes me feel calm. In the middle of the storm, it just makes me feel calm. That's very, very helpful, very, very helpful post to share. Well, uh, let's see if there's a couple more. Um, okay, there is here, seeking counsel from others and helping when you can and empathizing when you cannot. So I shared that earlier on. So thank you for those of you who did post up here. Um, I think it's nearing to 12 o'clock now. So people are probably getting ready to go for Salat Jumaat and also for lunch. But before that, since there's not many of us, um, those of us still here, can I just invite you to maybe turn on your mics and we have a tiny little cozy group photo uh, before we say our goodbyes and start the rest of our day today. So I will stop sharing. Amira, mic or video? I mean, turn on the mic or video? Oh, uh, maybe turn on uh, our videos and then maybe we can have a little... Well, actually, if anybody wants to speak, do just go ahead, turn on your mic. There's not many people here, <laughs> just like Dr. Sakya did. Um, but yeah, can I invite everyone to turn on your videos? And Umu, can we have a little group picture before we say goodbye? Okay. All right. No one's turning on their videos, but thank you, Sophia, because you did. <laughs> At least I see you. No, there are uh, there are many more. Uh, Dr. Shiva, oh. Sharifa, yeah. Tetemazia. Let's go. Yeah, Sorry. I think maybe your I think maybe your internet is a bit black. So don't worry. I think Umu got the picture. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So, I didn't realize Umu, how did many of it? us. <laughs> I think Umu is shaking her head. Um, 
I can't hear you, Umu. Okay, I'm sorry. I think my my. Okay. Uh, um, Umu should get everyone smile. All of you to smile, like for a few minutes. <laughs> a few minutes, okay. Okay. One, two, three. Uh, Kamira. Yes. Uh, you're kind of in the dark. I'm kind of in the dark. Uh, boleh tak dapatkan lighting sikit ke? Uh, okay. Your phone punya lampu pun tak apa. Um, I actually have a lamp here, so oh, let me try sure. that. Does that help? No. <laughs> I'll turn on a different camera. Do you see me on my other camera? Uh, I'll turn yet. off that one. Oh, okay. Let me turn off the um the main one. Okay. Now I'm only on one camera. Hold on. Hi, Dr. Mazia. Lama tak jumpa. Dr. Sharifa. Dr. Ko. Um, we're just waiting for Kamira to on the video or something. Oh, you're waiting for me? My video is yeah. on. Is it on? <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, you you can just use the same video just now. Oh, okay. All right. We'll, we'll try. <laughs> I'll move my lamp here. <laughs> okay. Do you want me to count, Umu, or do you want to count? Uh, we still can't see your face. Okay, uh, your that's, video. Yeah. Okay, that, that's all right then. Um, I yeah. know I I'm here, so we'll just get everyone else's picture, and then we'll okay. keep that. All right, all right. <laughs> Thanks everybody for being so patient, although you right. can't. Yeah. Okay, one, two, three. Uh, hold on. Okay, another one. Uh, let me change the... Um, um, boleh panggil Linda tak? <laughs> Sorry. Cakap TNCA call. That's uh, our juggling. <laughs> okay. All right, hold on. One, two, three. Thank you, Dr. Lee Kot Yen. Bye. All right. He had to go. <laughs> he had to go, so thank I'm just saying everyone. he had to go, so I just said bye. Okay, thank you so much, everybody. If you're still here, please do uh, fill up the feedback form. I think Umu can share it in the chat. If not, we'll be emailing it to everyone. So have a great day. And um, I hope that, you know, you can keep calm, be wise, and stay kind. And we'll see each other again soon. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye. Take care. Okay, I'm going to turn off my, I don't know which one is my video, so I'm just going to turn it off, but I'm still here, Yomu. Um, yes, uh, hold on, I'll end the meeting. Okay, all right. Bye, everybody.